All right, we're live. But I want to get it from current? here. Can you get on the headphones and see how we sound? Uh, yes, please, yes. I mean, yes. Like check, one, two, Who's one, saying? two. Ready? What's up? Okay. Oh, oh my God, it's such an epic picture. Three. Live. All right, wait, we need to see some comments here. Oh. <laughs> All right, we are recording. Let's see how we can get our comments up. There we go. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, let's see, here we go, all right. <laughs> That's weird, because it's like a delay. Whoa, it's delayed. I'm hearing delayed, yeah. yeah. I need to also turn that off. me out. All right, so we'll see the chat questions here. Let's see, is anyone, there's eight people. Yeah. What's up, eight people? <laughs> That's weird. It's weird I can't always see. Can you see that? Greetings from Columbia, what's up? Yes, Whoa. love yeah. Columbia. Love your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Love your country. Okay. Love. All right, here we go. Comments. You. Sorry. Did you get to we'll Columbia on that Geo piece. show on YouTube? I yeah. Geo now. We watch. Uh, it's Geography Now. Oh. It's my favorite YouTube I was, channel. I was doing the abbreviation. Yeah. Right. I'm a big Thanks fan. Comments. If you don't know about Geography Now, go check it out. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> All right, guys. Sorry about the. Organization here. We're learning along the way. <laughs> We're learning how to use the internet. All right, how do we sound, Ashley? You sound really good. All right. Mexico in the house. What's up, Jasmine? Oh. Yeah. Mexico. All right. Also awesome. Okay, place. is Kermit ready for this? How close do I talk to the microphone? Um, Ashley can tell you if you yeah. need to be closer. Here. Whoa. <laughs> that was nice. She'll, if oh, it's no. too loud, she'll oh. chill out. Do yeah. I need to lean or can I just chill? No, just no you can chill. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, guys, what's up? We're here live in Seattle with Chris and Eveling at the Eveling household mansion. It's the Scullin residence. <laughs> um, this is epi episode two of Real Talk, and I'm super excited because Kermit's here with us. How is Kermit standing up? Oh, he's on a, he's on a LaCroix. Don't tell that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, um, uh, welcome to the show, Kristen. <laughs> As you eat your pizza. So if you guys don't know, Kristen is a legend, and that's all you need to know about her. No, just kidding. <laughs> all right, so for the paper titles, co-founder of Skate Witches, who other co-founder, Shari, is here too. Woo! Shari White, my best friend, made Not it all the way here. Um, and uh, let's see what else. There's Shari, <laughs> co-founder, other number two. Um, all right, we got the questions flown. Awesome, guys. Thank you for posting the questions. We're going to get to the Q&A section at the end. But um, So Kristen is also the executive director of Skate Like a Girl, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. It's a 51C3 nonprofit that's here in Seattle, Portland, and SF Bay. And she also rides for Meow Skateboards. She's also in, like, 25 bands. <laughs> um, Close. It's two. What else? Uh, she is a friend to animals. Any other <laughs> labels I mean, that I can throw out there? <laughs> karaoke queen. Karaoke queen. Oh, yeah, karaoke queen, queen for her. sure. What's up, Hannah in the house? All right, so we're going to kick off with some funnier <laughs> questions just to, you know, I know you're really nervous for this. I know. You can tell, you're really, like, clammed up right now. So <laughs> I'm really stressed. <laughs> Sometimes I sweat when I'm stressed. To get so. the things going. Um, and we have some submitted questions, so shout out to the people who went ahead and did their homework and submitted questions. Mainly Alex White. <laughs> um, and also your husband, Alex. So um, Alex. give it up for Alex. First, most important question, what's your favorite LaCroix flavor? I think it's this key lime one that um, we just got. I want to try it. Cheers. Cheers. This is, like, really beautiful, the mm -hmm. graphics. I haven't seen this yet. I'm going to let you viewers get a little zoom in. Actually. Oh, wow. It's a great That's color delicious. combination. Yeah, it's really good. It really tastes like you're eating a key lime pie, but not gross. All right, great. Yeah. Um, favorite. And YouTubers, uh, fans, not fans, friends, if you guys have any, like, sound issues or you can't hear us, you can't see us, just let us know. Put like, it in the comments. Yeah, just be real mean and be like, dude, we cannot hear you. Real talk. Um, cannot hear you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, if you had a dad hat symbol to represent you, what would it be? Like, you know how the dad hat's with the little Yeah. Hmm. Probably just a skate witch's hat. Skate I mean, witch's hat. It's going to be basic on that. All right, <laughs> so basic. All right, Real. Cool. Um, this question comes from our very good friend, Alex White. Does Lance Bass want his haircut back? I don't know. <laughs> I hope he's tuned in right now and can go ahead and comment. Um, he has not, con his agent has not contacted mine, so... 
Okay. As for right now, the haircut is, you know, in the public domain. Yeah. But That'll make more sense we'll once see. you reveal your other hairstyle <laughs> later in the show. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. All yeah. right. Other like, reveal, round icebreakers. Okay. Back to your front board. Uh, I mean, you just got to get into it, right? So either one, but you got to no get into balance. Yeah. I mean, I like doing back lip slides on quarter pipes probably the most out of, yeah. I don't really like doing front boards. I kind of just do it to be like, yeah, I did it. Like, honestly, I don't <laughs> even like doing front boards. I don't do them right. Okay. If I was Vanessa Torres, I'd be like, yeah, front board's my favorite trick. But okay. I'm me and I can't do it right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. So back disaster. Okay, gotcha. Um, what's your favorite skateboarding time snack? Oh my gosh. Um, Probably anything involving hummus. So anything dipped in hummus is always good, good okay. to go. And Fair. it's not usually snacks, it's more really like a meal. Like I eat the whole thing of hummus. But okay. Yeah, awesome. or any junk food from 7-Eleven when I'm skating with Angie. Yeah, apparently Angie lives, <laughs> lives off of a candy diet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> favorite skate cities? Oh, um, I went to um, I've been to Barcelona and that was really cool, but also like overwhelming. I felt like I was like missing everything because I just stayed at Macba for like really long. Um, but that was really, really fun. Um, I love skating in LA, especially when uh, Shane, aka Skate Rat, is the guide. Um, would feel really lost without him. Um, and then just skating Seattle at night on like summer nights is really fun. Yeah, downtown. There's lots of stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um... Who has the last part in Seriously and the first part? Or um, do you not want to reveal since we're I'm down to reveal. Sorry. Okay. All right. Sure. All right. Sorry, first, I part, last part. Sure. Uh, first part is Una and last part is Audrey. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. And Spoiler. the tour is going down right now, so yeah. We'll talk about more we'll talk more about that in a second. Um, what was your MySpace profile song? I had Mike Jones. Um <laughs> two eight one three three four whatever. Eight zero zero folks. Something like that. It was like a Mike Jones Slim Thug song. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. It was mm -hmm. back in your like harder days. Yeah. When I was really trying to fit in with the boys. <laughs> gotcha. That's what the boys were listening to? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> it's really trying to be cool. Okay. Next question. Is what is the most stressful yeah. part about being married to a Canadian man? Waiting for a oh, friggin' so green so card. Funny. Yeah. That's All about right. it. <laughs> That's it. Nothing no, else. Alex is the sweetest angel ever. <laughs> All right. And then last icebreaker round question. This is from Alex. Other Alex, your husband, where did I put my car keys? They oh. are <laughs> <They're> not. not. <laughs> <laughs> he really legitimately wants to know. Uh, I don't know. I think in my jacket. No? I don't know where they are. <laughs> oh. House. Oh, yeah. They're at my parents' house. Okay. Um, cool. All right. If you guys have any questions, you can tap them on the side, and we'll get to those at the end, um, if we like your questions. Just kidding. No, we'll try to get to all the questions. Um, all right. So for those of our friends out there who don't know you, um, I'm going to ask a generic question of, like, how'd you get into skateboarding, and, like, what's your kind of story? Okay. That sounds good. Um, I got into skateboarding because... My friends and I had been watching the show Jackass, and we had scooters at the time, and so we filmed yeah. like Jackass style like stunt videos. And when I say stunt, I mean like um, a plywood piece on like I found like a brick and put it under it, and we'd like launch off of it on our scooters. So um, we did that for a while, and then Tony Hawk's Pro Skater came out, and my friend Kimmy had like a PlayStation One, so we all were at her house, and I remember like scrolling through the characters. My other friends were playing it and I was like, finally my turn and I was scrolling through the characters and I saw like Alyssa Steamer and I remember like scrolling over and then like going back, like, wait, what? There's a girl, like that's sick. And that from that point I was like, I knew that I could like skateboard. Like I already played like football with the boys at recess and stuff. But at that point I hadn't really realized that you could really be like the girl amongst like the dudes doing mm -hmm. it. Like for me, I was just like, oh, I'll do it just for fun. Like, but I could never like do anything with it. And just like seeing Alyssa Steamer in a video game, I was like, all of a sudden that realm of it became real and that kind of like motivated me i guess to gotcha. like actually like get my own board and like start skating i guess nice yeah um, and how old were you around uh i was like 12 yeah okay. so sixth grade so my six my uh the christmas in sixth grade i had been asking my parents like, what do you want for christmas i'm like a skateboard a skateboard a skateboard and they like i looked under the tree um every night and there was nothing that remotely looked like a skateboard so like uh christmas eve i like went to my dad and i was like dad like 
you guys didn't give me a skateboard, did you? And he's like, no. He's like, but you really want one? And I was like, yeah. He took me to Fred Meyer and we bought like a $30 uh, X Games brand complete that had like an eight ball on it. It was sick. <laughs> and I got that sucker and I skated on Christmas Day and started cruising around. So my first, that was my first board and kind of the rest was history. But that Christmas is really funny. There's a photo of me holding my first skateboard, but I also got like scooter parts because I was like still kind of on the scooter. <laughs> so yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So Nam, she was our first guest, and yeah. she also started out on the scooter. Really? Yeah. Nice. This is like a gateway drug. Yeah. Watch out, <laughs> children. <laughs> I hope that it becomes more of a gateway drug for those kids out there. Um, all right. So then, fast forward a few years, skate like a girl. What was your first experience of that? Um, I was at this indoor skate park called Brain City, um, and there was like randomly some girls there. I was like pumping around in the half pipe or something. And these girls came up and like, Hey, what's up? Like basically like nobody ever like approached me and was like, Hey, what's up? Everyone was like, you know, super weird. Mm -hmm. So these girls like came up to me and they're like, Hey, we run this organization called skate like a girl. And there's just, like all girls skate videos with like pro girl skaters in it, blah, 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 blah. And told me about like Amy and Vanessa. And like, this was like really before the internet kind of like in terms of like young people, like going on the internet and seeing, mm -hmm. so I had no idea who these people were, but they just told me there was like pro girl skaters in this video. So I was like, well, it's so cool. And they're like, yeah, we do this contest. It's down in Olympia. And I'm like, I'm a child. I'm like, I don't know, like 14 or 15. Like there's no way I could get there. Mm -hmm. So anyways, like fast forward till I was like 16, 17, they like added me on MySpace. Um, and uh, yeah, so then I kind of had heard about it and then I saw them post that they're doing an event and it just so happened to be at the skate park that I kind of like grew up skating at, mm -hmm. the Redmond Skate Park. Um, and so I just remember like being like, like skate like a girl, like that's so whack or I probably said a way worse word than whack, but, um, and I was like, this is so stupid. Like I'm the only girl I know that skateboards like blah, blah, blah. So like all the internalized misogyny possible <laughs> at that point. Um, and yeah, I just remember like rolling up to the skate park and I saw like Christina and Ryan, like Ollie, the eight stare. And I didn't even know who she was, you know, I was like, Whoa, who's that girl? And like, I turned the corner around the park and I saw like Nancy Chang with like a snow cone maker. And she was like making snow cones and like giving them out to people. And there was like a girl on the microphone. There's girls like ripping the bowl. And I saw a girl do a nollie flip. I'm like, what alternate universe is this? Like, where did all these people come from? Like, it was like night and day between like my normal show up at the skate park to like that day. And I just remember being like, what is this? Like sign me up. Like I want to be a part of this. Um, and like I skated my best I've ever skated. That's the day I learned how to feeble grind. Um, I feeble grinded this like out rail thing, but like I would never have even really tried that. I was like so inspired. I was like, not only is this cool, these people are like, I can relate to them, but also like I push myself skating wise. So I was like, this is perfect. So at that point, I sold my soul to skate like a girl, um, and yeah. And then, what's the, like nutshell path like? Um, like the next, like how I progressed. Into yeah, well, just bit. like in a nutshell, like how'd you get to where you're at today um, as the executive director? Like wow. you volunteered and then you like taught kids. And yeah, like, exactly. So they were doing. Um, basically, it was kind of like an op uh, a blank slate. Like whatever I wanted to do, I could host. And there was like I had so much like agency and choice. So I was like, I really want to do like uh girls session or they were doing like sessions for like kids like younger girls and i was like oh well, we should open it up to like girls and women so i like invited some of the girls i like met at the contest and like they came so like we would do lessons at the beginning and then we would like all free skate after we started doing ladies nights where we'd like meet up regularly at different parks and then i was like uh there was this contest called chicks flip out and um nancy chang organized a skate tour so we did this whole tour and then after that tour i was like i want to organize a skate tour so when i was like 19 i like, organized a skate tour for us to like go to california and back and it was like i did whatever i wanted i wanted i wanted to make stickers that looked like you know ripped off the bones brigade logo and i did like you know i wanted to do this and that and yeah so kind of just did a bunch of stuff started wheels of fortune like all that and then i'd say about like I graduated college and after that I took a job working at the YMCA. I worked there for like three years and learned a lot, but like working at the Y, it's like the biggest nonprofit in the world. So it was kind of like working for Walmart and then using everything you learn there to go run your own small business. That's kind of mm -hmm. how it feels. So I got to about three years at the Y, didn't like my boss really and just felt a little like stifled um, and also didn't really want to be in meetings about uh, workout equipment anymore. So I was like, I'm out. So I left. And then that's when I kind of, I took an AmeriCorps role uh, working with Skate Lifter Girl. Or I, guess, I guess it's private core, but it's very similar to AmeriCorps. So the idea is like, I was working for a stipend income and I started all of our school-based programs at SLAG and organized everything and just sort of slowly built it up from there. 
Yeah. So, so you like literally designed out the curriculum that like is being used today. Yeah, a lot of it. Like, yeah, from scratch. You're like, yeah, it'd be cool if the kids did this and this. And yeah. Like, well, I guess I was kind of borrowing things that I had learned at the Y because I sure. had like done a lot of like youth development training and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, that's really cool how we did that. But that part was dumb, and then you know it was kind yeah. of mixing that all together. And, yeah, it was pretty hard though. Like for the first year I worked for Scaler Girl, I kind of just drove from school to school to school to school to ladies' night. I was just like all over the place, but. It was also such a breath of fresh air. I was like, dude, I'm doing exactly like what I want to do. I have, yeah. you know, so, you know, when people are like, oh, with great freedom comes responsibility. I'm like, hell yeah, like, give it to me. Because yeah. um, I really prefer that versus somebody telling me what to do every day and like having it fit into a box. Yeah, totally. So for me, it was like stressful, but like financially, like I ended up moving back in my parents' house. I like, you know, broke with my boyfriend. I like moved, you know, changed jobs, did all these changes because I like, wanted to make that happen yeah mm -hmm. that's awesome but to just like literally create that from nothing like get a blank canvas and like mm -hmm. that's also it's like freeing but also really hard yeah like there's literally no direction and no formula no path yeah well so, i mean i had so some, awesome. some cool support like shout out to nancy chang definitely helped me a lot and and her partner marco I and mean, some other people that have been involved on the board level for skate like a girl like really helped a ton and then mm -hmm. you know holly and fleur the founders and nancy paved the way so like i started working for skate like a girl was already a 501c3 like a lot of the articles of incorporation bylaws all the things you need to start a nonprofit were already there yeah so i kind of right. jumped in and i was like woohoo i get to start all the programs and you know make so things cool. legit and consistent so yeah kind of was teed up pretty nice so don't you know really wasn't out of ashes it was out of yeah. It was work. a solid foundation. Yeah. 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 And even so the reason why I'm, I'm even in Seattle this weekend is because we had our all chapter summit literally yesterday and today. So Seattle, Portland and SFA, um, which me and Ashley, who's literally behind this computer screen, um, are directing now. And we met with the board and it's just such an amazing thing to be part of. Like the only reason why I even took that on was because knowing like you guys, you, Nancy, Lisa, everyone was already involved. Um, and then just being like, hell yeah, I want to work with you guys. Cause it's just so legit. Like it's fun, but it's also like, there's accountability there's structure. And like, I've seen, like, it was honestly for me, the first space where I actually felt like inspired to skate, even though I worked in the skate industry for like 10 years, you know? So I was like, eh, like I mm -hmm. just rather hang back and shoot photos or like, eh, like I'm not good enough to even like be, you know, like I wouldn't even bring my board or whatever. So yeah um so that's so cool and like it literally is like redefining the entire like culture and idea of like not just skateboarding but like what's even like available for for girls and women mm -hmm. and everyone else so yeah i definitely so think awesome. i'm enjoying changing the framework of what it who and how people can skateboard yeah because i think a lot Absolutely. of the like i don't know there's just so many like unwritten rules of skateboarding that i mean some of them like i abide by you know i try not to mall grab or whatever but <laughs> there's other stuff like you know you have to be good to skate or you know stuff like that like i think it's cool to reject some of those norms and, and yeah. redefine them and make your own skate culture totally yeah. yeah and on that note so like this whole time while you're like making your way up through skate like a girl and like creating this whole history um what was can you talk about like just being a part of like the meow team and then also starting skate witches like what was like kind of the time learn? how did that all even happen i don't even remember <laughs> i was <laughs> so like dang it you're gonna ask me about a time all all blur. Blur. okay we don't need like exact dates but like yeah how'd you get on meow because like i went to australia i thought i was gonna skate in the skate contest but then i was told that i couldn't skate in it because i wasn't australian <laughs> but i wasn't about to like refund my ticket i wanted to go see some friends and um shout out to Kat and me and Esther for hosting me and everyone else that I met down there you rock um and yeah I went down there and I skated and then it was like the best trip ever and I was like you know skating all these rad spots got a cool, bunch of cool photos like blah blah like I was really putting a lot of time into skating at that point and um on the way back I flew through LA and I like hung out with Lisa and we like got Chipotle or something for like an hour and did like, you know her back. before that or no yeah, I knew her okay. through Girl Skate Network. Like, I had come down to California and, like, hung out with Alex White one day. We went and, like, street skated a little bit. Like, and um, for the Villa Villa Cola video, I submitted footage. Um, <laughs> so there's, like, a kick uh, kick flip down a six stair or whatever that I did when I was, like, a child. And uh, side note, Alex White, because of that clip, calls me Pony Legs because I, like, didn't kick flip with my front foot going out. I, like, kick flip down so my feet look like they're galloping. <laughs> anyway, so I submitted that clip. So I kind of, like, sort of knew her, like, internet lurk style. <laughs> And then, this is like uh, pre internet, yeah, like social media. Yeah, pre Instagram. Well, Instagram was out, but it was like very much 
It wasn't like what it is now. So yeah. kind of met up with her, got Chipotle. And I think that's when she told me she was doing it. Cause I remember shortly thereafter she launched the website and she like called me. She's like, Hey, yeah. do you want to be like on the team? And I was like, heck yeah. Um, and at the time I think it was like me, Vanessa, Jen Soto and Amy Corral or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then kind of just been flowing with it forever. Like I just love the whole concept and Lisa is somebody that, you know, I've said this before. She's like the son that girl skateboarding, like this girl skateboarding universe revolves around. And, you know, now yeah. we're lucky to have multiple solar systems, you know, yep. lots of boss ass women doing stuff. But I mean, for the, I mean, if we're just thinking in a historical sense, like so much of the early like contests would not have been filmed if Lisa Whitaker wasn't yep. there, you know, and there's yep. other people like Alex White and other, other girls that picked up a camera and they really like were the pioneers of making that content. Yep. So I've always just respected Lisa and like, we just really jive. You know, she grew up as a core skater, so we just have a lot of common ground with that. Yeah. So. Yeah, Lisa. Yeah. Lisa, I would say, if it was coming down to like influential behind the scenes, like Lisa is definitely the number one. And um, and also talking about like wearing multiple hats and like literally creating whatever wasn't there. So. Speaking of hats. <laughs> my head's being hot. Um. But yeah, I like starting Girl Skate Network and like I knew Lisa back then when it was a side project. Yep. Uh, oh I yeah, I remember the side yeah. project. I would go to the side project website like every day. Like basically Lisa Whitaker saved my life. Like I would <laughs> have quit Lisa. skateboarding 100% because I was getting made fun of at school and then I was also first skating and then I'd go to a skate park and guys would make fun of me. So there was like a solid like year that I got a box and a rail and I skated by myself in my garage. Occasionally Sage would come over and skate with me and Sage was like like 11 or something but for the most part I just like skated by myself and that was cool I'd like make my own beats and then I'd like film myself with my dad cam and then like <laughs> I'd like make edits of myself like I want to find them like it's really funny um but I just like focus on just learning stuff and I would just I would go home and I would like set my rail up and I'd skate and then I'd like watch girls skate net or um decide project videos like um yeah, I used to watch, like, all the girls in the updates and stuff, and, yeah, I was, like, I felt like I was friends with them, you know, like, yeah. I was, like, I'd go skate in, in my own little world, and I'd, like, go on the internet. Yeah, also, what, like, what was that, like, breaking through from, like, oh, I feel like I know everyone from, like, watching and, like, just seeing videos and all that to, like, actually being there, and, like, because I feel like a lot of, like, girls, like, kind of wonder, like, oh, how do I get in, or, like, what should yeah. I do, or, like. I think. It used to be a little bit more, there used to be more of a wall. Yeah. You know, like I remember like the first time I met Amy, it was like so intimidating. And like now Amy and me are friends and everything, but Amy was definitely like, definitely kind of put through people through some type of gauntlet. Like, wasn't immediately <laughs> going to be your best friend? Like, you know? Yeah. Um, Everyone was younger back then too. Oh, so exactly. Like, totally. Kinda... And, and they were one of very few girls. So if you're the girl that's yeah. operating in a male dominated situation, right, you're going to have to drink more, act harder, say that, you know, something more edgy or be more badass because you have to like for sure secure your space. So you're in this very yeah. defensive mode. You're constantly being questioned. So then you come around other women that like are from the same like experience and it's so hard to break down that barrier because you actually have so much more in common than yeah. you think. So I would say these days, like there's so many more girl skateboarders, so much more normalized, like you know, guys know that girls skateboard now. Like, you know what I mean? It's not like, whoa, never seen a girl do that. Like, yeah. that is so rare these days. Thank goodness. Um, but, yeah, I think there's, like, a way way smaller wall, you know? So it's like yeah. if you put some footage up, you know, and you put it up regularly and you're just skating super hard and, you know, I think if you go out to Exposure, Wills of Fortune, some type of, like, girl skateboarding gathering, you're going to meet yeah. somebody, you're going to make friends. Like, everybody's pretty much friends or at least knows each other or collaborates in some way. Yeah. So, like, I wouldn't say there's, like, a very high barrier to entry. And, yeah. you know, I really hope that doesn't change. Like, yeah. all the girls now are, like, so humble, like, yeah, so nice. I mean, I would also say because of the events that, like, you created and that, like, Lisa, just the vibe that she would brought, like, she'd go to skate park and, like, meet girls and, like, be super friendly and down, like – that is like the culture we created within yeah. like the women's side. So for that to actually still be carried out, I think is super important. And I think it's happening. It's like, there's no, like, I would hope that it wouldn't go that way, but I also don't think it's like possible because for so long it was just like, you just felt so alone or the experience that I've heard from a lot of different girls. And then to actually now like be intentional about like going up to people and be like, Hey, what's up? And like saying hi mm -hmm. and just being stoked that like we have that access now, whether totally. it's through events or like through Instagram or whatever. So yeah. I and think I, that's something really cool. And I'd say like core skate culture or whatever, like usually is very like standoffish or whatever. Like yeah. 
I just know when I was a kid, I'd be like, oh, there's that guy. I know he's got gnarly backside flips and, and he's, he's got backsmith grinds and like that dude's sick. Do I know his name? Nope. Do I know where he lives? Nope. Do I know he does for work? Nope. But like we'd go to the park and we'd be skating together. Yeah. You know, and that was like my friend, but like it was like this super awkward passive culture, especially in the Northwest. So I think it's like rad if girl skateboarding is like more friendly and more like almost like even if you don't feel like it, like go say what's up to somebody yeah. because literally that could be your best friend. Yeah, <laughs> like, probably will be. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, nice. Cool. All right. Okay. So tell me about Skate Witches then. How did that happen? Um, Skate Witches. I don't know. Fall City. Yeah. Good. So Shari's queuing me up some knowledge here. <laughs> uh, so there's a contest that 35th North threw for 10 years in a row called All City Showdown. Basically, it's like one skater, uh, three or three skaters, one filmer, um, and you have like eight hours, excuse me, to go and skate um, all over the city of Seattle. Um, you have to come back and turn your tape in, and then they have all the tapes, they mark all the clips, and import everything, and then they make a big edit, and they premiere it like six months later, mm -hmm. and they give out prizes and stuff like that. So I got invited like through the owner. He was like, hey, do you want to do like a girls team? And I was like, yes, definitely. So I was like, all right, who can I round up? <laughs> and I had met Shari like a few times when we skated and whatever, and we were friends. And I was like, that girl rips and it's down for anything, like just ride or die, like in the van. And I was like, yes. So number one, and then uh, picked out a couple other friends, like one girl that could kind of film a little bit and um, my friend Christina from Portland. And who else? Was only well, really that was the first one. That was the first year. Okay. And then the second year, Sage? Yeah. Yeah, and the, yeah. And so the next had, year, Samaria. Samaria, yeah, and then and Helena. And then Helena. Yeah. Year and then Helena. Yeah. So, yeah, so we just But had, so did you guys, when you started it, you were like, we want to make a zine? Oh, yeah, like, no, shoot. My intention? bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> okay, so we got asked to do this team, and we had to pick a name, and we picked the Skate Witches, okay, gotcha. because we had watched this video online um, called The Skate Witches. If you haven't seen it, Google it. It still comes up when I'm, like, trying to get it. Yeah. From, like, the 70s. Yeah, yeah, or like 80s or something. It's it's super rad, and there's these badass girls that like don't even really skateboard, but they are just like badass, and they have rats, and they push boys over, and we're just like, this is the coolest thing ever. So we just wanted to embody that kind of spirit, and then we kind of went on some skate trips and like had been getting photos. Uh, yeah, we made like stickers and some socks, and then um, Shari's uh, partner Ollie, he shoots photos, and so he shot some cool photos and. We got some photos from, like, our friend Maria and their little crew, like, the but, freaks yeah, or the whatever. Yeah, the scene was, was, like, just people walk like that. Like, yeah. It was just, yeah, it was, like, just a three pages, tiny little one. Yeah. So we just kind of started making a zine just for fun, and then we had so much fun making it that we're, like, we should do another one and do another one and do another one, and then, I don't know. And now, kind of just now the intro there. pages have turned into, like, cultural pieces <laughs> that should be I don't know. shared. <laughs> No, really. Bad. Hopefully, like, people read it. If you if you just read Skate Witches or look at Skate Witches with pictures, I'm not bummed. You know, if you picked up our zine, I'm still. So. Yeah, no, but like seriously, your intros, like whatever intro letter and editor's letter, I don't know whatever you want to call it. Like, it's they're pretty. I mean, to me, it's like you're putting out a message that, in a way, that isn't necessarily being put out there, um, and also like you're really, I don't know, like. The way that you're writing it and sharing the, the message and the culture is actually really impactful because yeah like instagram's great like clips and comments and like yay but like you're actually intentional about sharing knowledge and like text-based is like how knowledge was shared initially mm -hmm. so like yeah. that's super cool and I, th I think the whole uh the whole like ethos behind skate witches is that instead of like trying to fit in with male skate culture like if you've seen the exposure documentary or can you kickflip like it's like basically girls complaining that they're like not sponsored. And now like there's definitely a lot of like headway that's been made and a lot of barriers being shattered in terms of getting respect in like the mainstream industry. But when we started skate, which is like, this was before any of those opportunities were really yeah. open. Like Nora wasn't on like welcome or Adidas or yeah. anything like that at that point. And like Lacey hadn't, you know, signed yeah. with Nike. It's like, now it's like the landscape's totally changed. But when we started it, like we were like, fuck, you know, sorry, am I allowed to swear? Sure. Uh, <laughs> <Real talk. laughs> sorry if you're a child. Um, uh, we were just like, fuck, like we're so sick and tired of trying to like fit into something that isn't for us. It looks like it's for us, but it's not for us. It's something that we've grown up in, but it doesn't, we don't fit 100% in there. So we're like, they're not going to do it. Yeah. And they're not going to do it the right way. They're not going to do it for us. They're not going to hire us to do it. Like we got to just do it. Yeah. Like, and 
I think that's like, I think one of the first like intros I wrote was like, the analogy goes like this. Tony Hawk and like the Bones Brigade guys and stuff weren't pissed at Sports Illustrated for not representing them yeah. in Sports Illustrated, right? Like skateboarding's a sport. Like, why don't we get any respect? Like, nobody's getting coverage of Sports Illustrated. Like, that's like, that's like the same idea as like girls being like, why aren't we getting respect and like, you know, getting represented in guys' magazines? If you open up a magazine of Trans World and like scroll down, like you're not gonna see a ton of like female names, you know? So it's like it, that's related. So for us, it was like we just wanted to create it. And I hope that in the future, more girls see what we're doing and they either make a zine or they graduate with journalism and have a goal of like getting into skateboard writing. Because if girls are behind these pieces, like I think it's going to change the dialogue and the, yeah. the landscape of skateboarding in terms of zines. Because yeah. countless times I've opened up a magazine and read something racist or read something really messed up or sexist or homophobic or just language or, you know, like scantily, objectifying yeah, women. objectifying women, like. You know, this is 2017. Sex doesn't sell. Like, get over it. Like, <laughs> skateboarding's for everybody. Like, you, we don't need any like gatekeepers of what's yeah. cool in skateboarding. Like, chill out. Yeah. You know, skateboarding's for everybody. Part of it was so cool is that it really does inspire, and encourage other girls and people in our community to just take it into your own hands. Like, whether it's a zine or like shooting photos or like totally. even putting your stuff on Instagram. Like, I know that's like a lot of people are like, Instagram is like, oh, it's not good enough. It's like, no, like just share whatever yeah. you have yeah. and whoever you are. Just you share don't it. know who you're inspiring. Yeah, you don't exactly. know who you're a possibility model like for. Um, and you know, I honestly, sometimes I'm like, oh, I like my outfit or like, I'm on it. I'm being honest. Like yeah, sometimes like, oh, sure, I looked yeah. whack or my hand looks stupid. Yeah. But it's like, when I watch some of these clips, I don't even think about this stuff. I'm like, dang, yeah. that girl did that. Or like, whatever. I'm like, wow, that was like an interesting way to do that. Or like so-and-so, dang, they're progressing a lot. Yeah. Like, or I'm like, dang, this person skates every day. I haven't skated in three days. I'm blowing it. Like, yeah. you don't know who you're inspiring. Like, seriously, like if anybody's watching this, all 14 of you right now, <laughs> don't, uh, anymore, don't, <laughs> don't, uh don't like second guess yourself. Yeah. Don't be your own worst critic. And also like for me, like I was more like having worked in the industry and like shooting like pro skaters, like I was not inspired by that. Cause I was like, I can't do that. I'm never gonna do that. And then actually seeing like, like women my age and older, like posting clips of like learning to skate. I was like, Oh, that's way more inspiring to me. Cause it's like relatable. So yeah. like, it's important to like, not, not do things because of whatever like constraints that you have or society has like put on us or whatever so um we tell ourselves like, like a lot of stories i feel like yes, that we can't definitely. do stuff um and a lot of times we just haven't done it yet or we just we can't do it yet but we'll get there yeah exactly. and, uh, so what's the future vision for the skate which is well honest. um similar to scale like a girl we do whatever we want <laughs> <laughs> This um, is issue nine, the latest issue. Yeah, so right now, Shari got a VX two years ago, a year and a half? Three yeah, years. about two years ago, Shari got a VX 1000. And I was like, cool, I can never film video. Shari's like way better at that stuff. She's like perfectionist and like makes shit like correct. And I'm like kind of the scatterbrained person that's got all the energy and the, you know, random ideas. Shari's the one that makes it look pretty on Photoshop. And I was like, I can't do that. Um, but then I got injured. I got had a high ankle sprain. And um, my friend Lexi here in Seattle was like ripping. I was like, dude, I really want to start filming because there's girls ripping now locally that I need to be capturing that I need to be a local local Lisa Whitaker. So I got a VX and a couple months later got a lens and yeah, so we're really into video stuff right now. We just finished uh, Seriously, which is our first video. Um, and you're on the premiere tour right now. Yep, we're on the premiere <laughs> tour right now. Seattle is tomorrow and then we're going to hit um, SF, SF at Deluxe on November 1st and then at the Exposure after party a few days later and then on the way back at Seattle um, we're gonna Portland. hit Portland. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, so it's just a fun video like we only filmed for like six months and it's Shari and I are both filming full parts for the next Skate Rats video so nice. it was kind of a lot of the tricks that we filmed that weren't necessarily like good enough for like that video mm -hmm. and I don't mean that in like a negative way but it's like there's a difference between just like getting a fun clip on like a silly spot and then actually like trying something, you know, and finding the perfect spot for the trick you want to get. So like this is all this a lot of the footage that like we just, you know, me and Angie just went out in the middle of the night and filmed it or like whatever. Like yeah. um it was just we just the my personal goal for it was to not get pissed while filming any other tricks. Like just having fun. And obviously you're gonna get a little stressed and a little sweaty, but like remembering that like you're here to have fun and Yeah. Clock's ticking, it's getting, you know, I'm getting older, I'm not getting any younger, so <laughs> yeah. gotta get out in the streets. So it's it's been awesome. I'm obsessed with street skating now. Which is cool. Nice.
And are you guys uh, working on new clothing? Yeah, so uh, this, is our, uh, this is the yeah. latest design. It's kind of like a collage of different witchy, badass things. Um, I kind of... Yep, and yeah, we're gonna make these hats because I walked into Shari's work and I was like, dude, I'm gonna steal this hat. <laughs> or I, I said, I'm gonna have a hard time not stealing this. And Shari's like, oh yeah, well, I gotta order one. And, I, and then I like kept looking at myself in the mirror. I'm like, damn, I look tight in this hat. <laughs> this hat fits me too good. And then she's like, all right, you can have it. I'll order another one. Uh, so yeah, I got this hat and then we're gonna make uh, this color and then also some black ones. Yeah, nice. Um, it seems to be like, I mean, I mean, I just see it everywhere. I'm not everywhere, but like I see it way more and more. And like, obviously, I know I feel like you guys have put, been putting out new stuff more often. And it's yeah. like a side thing. So obviously, it's not like anyone's full time thing, but yeah. It's so I mean, awesome. soon. Yeah. I think, yeah. I don't know. Like, Shari's been screen printing for a while. I remember when we started Skate Witch and Shari, like, to get into it volunteering at that spot or yeah I was volunteering. yeah volunteering to learn and then now Shari basically is you're like managing yeah. most of the stuff and like doing layout and design and still nice. doing like all the invoicing and stuff like that so Shari is a boss in, in that realm so it's been really cool to see Shari like learn everything and get it down really good and all the design and stuff and she's got like her finger on the pulse of like oh like this is really good for fall or like oh this has been cool and like she's always getting like samples sent so it's like we're definitely not starting from nothing like this is Shari's professional job and it's like yeah. coming in and like I'd say in a similar sense like I'm writing about stuff that I'm talking about at Skate Like a Girl yeah. so like I'm learning about like what in intersectional feminism means in in skateboarding in terms of like teaching lessons to kids and stuff in the work of Skate Like a Girl and I'm like directly translating that into like what I'm writing in Skate which is so like a lot of the stuff just informs everything and a lot of you know so yeah yeah so Shari's definitely killing it on the merchandise and yeah, the design Shari. and everything. Sometimes I'll throw some, throw some ideas. Oh, you're the colorway, though. I'm always like, check this out, and then what colorway do you want? Yeah, I'm good at picking colors. I mean, what can I say? Um, What's the coolest thing that's happened since starting to see it, which is, like, a comment this? or feedback <laughs> of this show? No, just seriously? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, video, yeah, yeah. Seriously, yeah, the video. video. One time we were in Thrasher, mm -hmm. and, like, for the week after Shari and I got our photo holding a zine, in, our zine in Thrasher, I was like, I'm retired, so I like went golfing and like did a bunch of other things. Uh, to you know, is there gonna be seriously too, or some other? Oh, for sure, too fast, too serious. I mean, we're <laughs> accepting names. DM us. Um, so good. I yeah. Should I tell? Should I tell the world what our next video is gonna be called? Most likely. Ew, Not it's yet. Still on the DL. We should uh, keep that for. No, there'll definitely be a lot of videos. And okay. honestly, if you're out there and you are female identified or some other. Um, identity that is gender expansive or whatever you don't identify as a male skater for whatever reason send us in your clips um, for their next video so yes. film it on a VX 1000 that's the only real rule and film it in a street or like a DIY spot like no skate park stuff um, but yeah send it to us um, at you know the skate which is at gmail.com gotcha. so we had a lot of people like Steph Levita sent in some clips and um, uh, Charlie, Charlie uh, sent in a bunch of clip of, clips of like Sam and Nika Washington and some other rad rippers. Nice. So it's definitely like not like our thing. Like you can definitely submit clips and we'll throw you in there. Nice. We just want girls to get out and film, like get out on the streets. Like doesn't matter. Like, yeah, watch like Mariah Durant all day, like and be like, dang, I can't hard flip. Or you can watch that and be like, dang, she's doing that. I'm gonna go do this. Like I'm gonna go do my best and go film it or whatever. And yeah. Yeah. To make something happen. Like, don't get discouraged that, like, yeah. you're not as good or whatever pathway you, you yeah. thought you could get on. Because for a while, it's like, you just become a pro skater. And it's like, mm. like, there's a lot of people making, like, really rad careers in and around skateboarding that um, they're not jumping off. They're not hard flipping off roofs. Yeah. So. Well, I feel like that's the whole point, too. What, at least the vibe that I've gotten and is just that it's for everyone in the sense that, like, no matter what you can or can't do on your board, like you can still enjoy skateboarding. Mm -hmm. And so like seeing literally like a photo or a magazine or a zine or a clip and like, that's like what the message you guys are putting out there and it's like being created. So that's awesome. Well, Sharon and I talked about it. Like when we were first doing the zine, I think it was around like zine two. We were like, Oh dang. Like, should we really try to get girls like doing like really hard tricks or should we like just show girls where they're at? Yeah. And like, we kind of like talked about it for a while and obviously like having girls like ripping there's like this whole idea like whoa never seen a girl do that before like whoa but then we're like fuck that like that ethos and that like mentality comes from guys who girls are trying to like get validation in like a male dominated like framework of skateboarding yeah. so if we just throw that out the window all the expectations like whatever anybody's doing as long as they're doing their best that's sick and if that's where girls are at right now that's where they're at yeah and like 
also I feel like there's a reason why like on Oprah like random people come on and like share their story and when they're like whoa that's so cool you like relate right yeah and not everyone not every girl skateboarder is going to relate to like the cream of the crop top 10 percent of girl skating like you have to showcase the full spectrum of abilities and where people at so as long as the photo is dope and it's shot right and you know it's not like an ollie that's like the tail still on the ground you know what i mean like that kind of stuff it's like good time and all that like we definitely right. put it in the zine. I'm gonna have to work on my ollie. So yeah. Zine. Yes. <laughs> well, I just mean the timing of the photo. Know, the know. timing of the photo. Like a lot of times, like people that rip, like send us photos and their arm is cut off, and we're like, yeah, yeah, freak. Like we have to have this conversation again with somebody, and it's like really harsh because we don't like discourage people, but we want to be like, hey, like you rip your photographer. Yeah. Can we talk to them? <laughs> Ooh, idea for the next zine, like a how-to. Yeah. Like, shoot skate photos. Yep. Yeah. I'm down. Cool. Namchi. Yeah. Norma. 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 Norma in the house. Zora. Olga. Zora. Olga. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. All right. So. We have some questions getting submitted here. Oh, yeah. We do have some questions. questions. All right. Should let's we burn take, through those? Yeah. Let's take a quick um, audience break here. Not an audience break, but there's a lot up here. So let's see. Let's drop through the top here. So good. Somebody asked me when the last time I shaved my butt was. I was wondering if you were talking about the <laughs> cheek or the crack. Lexi has some pretty solid questions. Uh, it probably was Lexi. I think it was Lexi's sister on Lexi's account. Um, <laughs> Lexi wants to know who would win in a fight, a grilled cheese sandwich or a taco? Taco. Or Elise wants to know. Taco. <laughs> taco. That's an interesting fight. Um, yeah, Devin asked you the question. Wait, scroll up one. Is that the Kermit from Buy Nothing? Hannah, yes. Can you tell us about Kermit? Um, I love Kermit. Wondering. It's not easy being green. I also just like really relate to green like characters like Peter Pan. If like, they were as pet a kid. pig, what would the name be from Carrie? Really depend on the color, but I would definitely like name it after someone famous because my friend Angie has a fish named LeBron James. So oh. yeah. Is LeBron James? Yeah, is LeBron R.I.P.? No, no, LeBron never died. <laughs> he doesn't die. <laughs> <laughs> I like drinking coffee. <laughs> and he lived. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody needs their fish to be babysat. Call Angie. This is well, a question. Actually, from... somebody babysit LeBron. Oh yeah! <laughs> if you're in the Seattle area and you can babysit right. LeBron. Oh, never mind. We already covered it. You blew it. Uh, question from Devin: Who farted the smelliest fart you've ever smelled? Me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, me and Alex. Me and Alex have been together for like how long? I don't know. Three years. Whatever. You guys have been together I don't know. weeks. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, three years. I have witnessed and like heard or whatever one fart <laughs> one no i'm not joking From one Alex? yeah wow. no one total you? fart Are no you what? no way. no i'm serious remember when you farted the other day i was like i have never heard you fart before <laughs> are they usually silent i have oh. no idea maybe alex can answer that on his okay talk. okay <laughs> yeah sorry i'll save it i'll save it um but me on the other hand not a silent fart not a I just fart a lot. Is, uh, like to only be a silent fart? It seems a little you're blessed. Hashtag this is fart. real talk. This is a safe yeah. space. I can smell farts though. <laughs> Lexi wants thing? to know, do you read while you go poop or do you scroll insta instead? Probably the length of the poop. More Instagram, but sometimes I'm like reading an article from Sean King. Shout out to Sean King. If you don't know about Sean King, please follow Sean King. Would you rather eat a delicious home cooked meal or a worm? What? A delicious home cooked meal. As long as Alex cooked it. Would you rather snuggle a random person or lick a cow butt? Cow butt? What? Is it then snuggle a random person? A random person? Like, what if that random person, like. Lick a cow and get a disease? I could, like. Alex wants you to snuggle a person. I feel like I could, like, apparently. very quickly, like, go like that and then, like, immediately <laughs> oh, clean my tongue. I don't want to snuggle a random person. <laughs> That's gross. All right. Well, great questions, guys. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> really <laughs> solid use of a lot of them. Um, yeah. Oh wait, there's one other question. Uh, skate witches are in an event in Mount Baker. Um, yeah. So this person, I can't remember her name, but she's a snowboarder for Mervin, and she hit me up, and she's like trying to do some bowl jam. So we were gonna like sponsor it, and I was gonna help like rally girls from like Vancouver and Seattle to like come up for this weekend, because I guess they're gonna do like snowboarding and skateboarding in the same weekend. It's gonna be this like event i guess it was like barrett christie's event or something i don't know anything about snowboarding um i just know how to get down the hill and... shout out to barrett she's awesome yeah totally. all right so all right we're gonna get back to serious real talk real serious talk um 
All right. So I remember when I first met you, I think you we like were kind of on the same page, but you were talking about how you like um we're going through this phase in your life where you're kinda of, like not just feeling healthy, like drinking, partying, whatever. Yeah. And you like made a conscious decision. Like, can you tell me about that? Um, yeah. Uh I s okay. I think it was like a collaboration uh so i spoke earlier about how when i started working for scale a girl right before that i moved out of my apartment moved back with my parents quit my job of three years that i had all these connections with and had like literally built from the ground up i could be yeah, like made a position at the y for myself essentially over like years of work and had all these community connections all these kids families like i loved it there um and then also work with my boyfriend that was like he was mad problematic and crappy and uh so finally like I decided to do all those things, and it all they all happened within like a matter of a week. Um, so Kevin, <laughs> Kevin the cat is here. The cat just Kevin. walked in. Um, and Kevin. yeah, so I did all that, and oh. I unfortunately did all those things all at the same time, and that left me in the place where I felt really depressed, and I was in this transition, and so I definitely like turned to alcohol like a lot to like cope and whatever. Like um, there was like a couple times where I would like just go to the park with like a beer and just like drink by myself and partying a ton and like going out on dates and like drinking and like try like people were like I'm a very like monogamous person like that's like my personality I guess and like I'm very loyal to people and everyone's like yo just go date and go meet people and I was like trying to do what everybody else does everybody told me I should do so I tried to date all these people and I was just partying a lot and and then I like got to a point where I started like I was like this isn't making me feel good so I started running and running if you are struggling with like quitting smoking or alcohol or anything that's like not healthy, maybe it's sugar or whatever. Like if you start running, like you literally cannot do those things and run. Yeah. So I started running with some friends, Marshall and Nancy. And when I did that, um, I basically was like, I have to quit drinking cause I can't do it anymore. So I quit from running. I quit smoking and quit smoking weed, quit drinking. Um, and yeah, I, was like vegetarian for a little while and then went vegan um yeah and it all kind of happened at the same time yeah i was just like over spending money on alcohol i was over like wasting my time yeah. i was also like 26 or something i think at the yeah. time 25 26 and i was just like looking at my other friends and i was just like what are we doing yeah totally it just i don't know for me i just wanted to just ax it out completely that yeah. that's how i knew i wasn't gonna do it again and also i was like scaring myself like i drink a bunch and i like go eat like a hamburger or something and then like be like kind of sober and like drive home like just like sh stupid stuff like that that i'm like i was like i'm too old for this yeah totally and yeah. i just wanted to skate like i wanted to spend my time skating i wanted to be in bands like yeah. i wanted to be doing stuff. yeah i was like it sounds like that potentially freed up a lot of time Yo, and yeah. energy to do start a zine be yep. a second character for skate like a girl <laughs> like <coughs> be in bands and like yeah. do all this other awesome stuff definitely kind of like cool. all ended up dovetailing and like yeah. i have such a like way way better quality of life and quitting drinking is like scary because you don't realize like how much you use it to like cope with your feelings like oh i'm feeling a little bit like emo today or whatever and you drink and you like forget about whatever was making you feel insecure but like when you're sober it's like you don't have that so you have to find other ways to do it such yeah. as crying journaling talking to people yeah. skateboarding like yeah you know so also finding like, like handling it and not just yeah. like trying to like numb it out or push it under exactly. the rug or whatever yeah cool nice that's awesome yeah cool all right so another question is um and this is something that um i'm sure just gets asked a lot in like you know skate interviews but when it comes especially like for me like one of the biggest fears is like fear and injury like mm -hmm. so you have been injured you know some a few times like pretty gnarly injuries like how do you get past that like how do you continue how do you not just be like okay well i've been injured once like i think i'm just gonna do this and stay at this level but continue to still progress mm. yeah i definitely like try to black it out <laughs> try to not think about it um i mean certain injuries are hard like i had a high ankle sprain like about this time last year like the day before exposure bad and it was like right after i got married and alex and i i was like let's go on our honeymoon slash i'll skate exposure like we'll go <laughs> yeah i'm an asshole um <laughs> so uh my karma was the night before filming with my friend shane trying to get this trick that i could totally do my foot just slipped off my board and i got a high ankle sprain and that was like months and months of like not skating and trying to rehab it and misdiagnosing it thinking i'm better hurting it again like so that one was a really hard one to come back from especially because uh like tray flips and a lot of tricks that are like back foot heavy is my back foot so that was really hard but i definitely feel like um 
I'm really good at listening to my body. If that's like my biggest advice. If you're skating and you have this thought that crosses through your head that's negative, or you something comes through your head and you're like, man, I'm thirsty, or like I have to pee, like listen to yourself. Your body is telling you like what you need. And nine times out of ten, like I swear when I've gotten hurt, it's because like five minutes before I was like, man, I'm really dehydrated. And it's like if there's just a culture on skateboarding that you like push through. Yeah, there's a culture that done. yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're like so focused, yeah. like you're so in the zone, and that's like where when you can get hurt. So really good at like listening to my body and and honestly sometimes I'm like going for something and I'm just like I just want to try it I'm just going to commit to one there's really never been a point where I've been like all right I'm just going to commit to one and I get like seriously hurt like usually like if you're like ready to like go for it then like you probably could at least like get into the trick like if I feel like I can't even get myself to commit to it then I won't even try it Um, yeah cool that's a good measure yeah and honestly like I do stuff on the tiniest obstacle possible like I learned back tails from like learning them on like something this tall and then I like learn them like bigger, bigger, bigger. Like I lost them. I got to relearn them. But I'm not excited about <laughs> that pathway. But I don't know. It's like you can really learn anything on your skateboard. Just find something to first try it on and listen to yourself. If you're scared, like, and you can't relax and just try something, then it's like just try something else. Like it's non-linear. Yeah. You don't have. You can do whatever yeah. you want. Totally. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. Um. All right. This is a real talk question. So for me, like, kind of scared. Yeah. You you don't need to be scared, but, um, I think even now, like when I was younger, of course it's normal, but like, there's always some, like those kind of like insecurities that like keep you awake at night or like those self doubt moments, like for you, like, what would you say that would be like, given all you've accomplished and like the role model that you are and like the influence that you have, like, what would be kind of like, is there anything that's sort of like that thing that still is like, ah, I wish or. Yeah. A lot of stuff to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> well, you share. I'm pretty like, one. I'm pretty sensitive. Um, I'd say recently I've been able to get over a lot of that. Like, um, like one of my best friends just passed away mm-hmm. and, um, Sage and like, like Sage was so brave you know and like I watched them like walk through this battle with cancer with like never crying and just being so badass yeah and like I just feel like that's put a lot in perspective a lot of my insecurities like what do my insecurities they don't serve me yeah you know and I've really like lately just been able to kind of turn it off nice but like you know I know that there's going to be weaker moments to come in the future and you know I'd say if I had to like list them out like sometimes I'm like am I gaining weight? Am I like getting too old? Am I going to like tear my ACL? Um, was I being too like serious or kooky about something? Am I like too radically feminist and like people don't get what I'm talking about? Um, sometimes I think like, you know, is my, like, what do people think about my skateboard? Do I have wax style? Like, you know what I mean? Like I think about a lot of different stuff. Like I was like, there's a million insecurities and some of them some days are like pumping, (laughs) you know? And then some of them, I don't think about them for a long time. Um, you know, a lot of stuff like, like social stuff. Like I think social media really messes with my head sometimes. Yeah. I think everybody like, For sure. you know, and I like look at, watch somebody on Instagram do something that like, you know, yeah. a trick that I can do. And like, everybody's like, well, so sick. And then like, I do it and nobody cares. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's kind of like, it's easy to be like, oh, this person's so popular. Or this person's so important. Cause they get 14 million yeah. likes. And then I have to like recenter and be like, not real. Actually <laughs> that's not real. And that doesn't matter. And good for them that's freaking rad i'm yeah. stoked for them you know yeah. and like it's really easy i think with instagram to get like jealous of other people or yeah. like feel inadequate yeah. you know so totally. i try to like really recenter and remember yeah. like o- honestly sometimes when i'm feeling sad i make a list that's like shit that makes me feel good shit that makes me feel terrible and stuff that man sometimes yep sometimes one way sometimes the other way and always like social media is like in that like middle ground you know yeah, like it never sure. always makes me feel good for sure um and then things that make me feel good are like actually going and skating calling my friends yeah. like, spending time with my husband like visiting my parents like really Real wholesome things. things like really wholesome yeah. things but it's so easy to forget and you're like why am i depressed why do i feel yeah. inadequate and i'm like well you're kind of bombarding yourself with everyone else on the internet's putting out their best life curated, yeah they're curated like number one you know yeah so you can sit there and be like oh, like i don't have anything and yeah. it's like that's so not true like you really have to count yeah count your gratitudes yeah and in like this is like why we're even here having this conversation because even for me like i have all the insecurities as well and like it's not that i feel like people are like oh like everything's so perfect it's like no actually it's not perfect but it is recognizing that as humans like we all have that and when you do have that voice in your head to just like 
clicked off or turned off. And the best way is to just like go do something in real life. Yeah. So even for us, like with Mafia, it's like, all right, cool. We have followers. We're doing all this stuff on Instagram. Like, but it just, I, there was something missing for me too. Not only like as a sustainable business, but also just like, what's the point of all this? You know, I'm like yeah. literally behind a screen for like 10 hours a day. And I like, wasn't even like in the world doing the things that I wanted to do, which is yeah. why I even like got into the skateboarding industry. Mm-hmm. Um, so taking on skate like a girl, but also just like, having a real conversation as opposed to like this little edited conversation, which is what social media is. It's like yeah. these perfect moments that are like finely, you know, like tuned that instead of just being like, all right, this is like real talk. Just like, cause I'd have these conversations with people and it would make me feel way better than like looking at, you know, Instagram or mm-hmm. social media. So yeah. I think there needs to be a better, a good balance. Yeah. Totally. Of both. Cool. Awesome. Um, <laughs> all right. So, Let's talk a little bit about WAF. Okay. Um, so this is a quote from Ashley, <laughs> my dear friend and co-director, who is also managing the sound. So <laughs> it sounds bad. It's her fault. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ashley. So Ashley, this is a quote from Ashley Masters. She said, I thought I was confident in showing up in different spaces in my life. And then I went to WAF and I've never felt as confident in my own body and self as I did at Wheels of Fortune. Aww, I thought you were going to say you felt really nervous or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, that. That's and awesome. Yeah, so like, I think similar experience when I went to law for the first time, I was like, whoa, like, this is crazy because I'd spent all this time like in the skate industry. Yeah, you and, walked like, into the skate like a girl universe. Yeah, like, and it was know? like this totally different thing. And so I think, um, yeah, I don't know, just talk about it and like, what does it mean to you? And for someone who doesn't know what it is, like... How yeah. can we share that experience? I mean, obviously, you should just come because that's the best way to get it. Or start <laughs> but, your own. Yeah, or start your own. Like what these people might not know about. Them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wheels of Fortune. Um, yeah. Little yeah, so Wheels of Fortune, uh, similar to the Skate Witches and other projects that I'm a part of, uh, I just realized I hated skating contests that weren't thrown by, like, women and, like, core women, female skaters. Like, I went down to um, – skate uh goofy versus regular there was a contest and there was like a girls jam that was part of that and it was like such like a sideshow i skated maloof money cup when the tech deck winner won more than the women's prize purse Mm -hmm. entirely uh i've just seen so much bs in skateboarding Mm -hmm. and i was just like we need a contest that's for us by us and even if it's tiny it's ours yeah and that was like super important and also like my whole introduction to getting involved with skate like a girl was that they were throwing a contest and i was like i don't know any other girl skaters like this is stupid and i showed <laughs> up right so we get that a lot at waff like girls yeah. are like what like where has this been it's different now because you see it on instagram every day girls skateboarding and it's not this weird thing but when it was first started it was like this doesn't exist we want to do it i was tired of skating at nine in the morning you know before the guys like you know nobody cared like no prize money, like all that kind of stuff. It's like, we're going to do our own thing. So basically we started in like the first event, like 30 people showed up. I think the only pro that came was like Amy Crone, you know, and fast forward like to this coming May, it's going to be our ninth annual event, you know, regular attendees include like, you know, Vanessa Torres and, um, Lacey Lacey. Baker and you know, like everybody, Mariah, Mariah, like girls from all over the world. Like there was a girl that came from Colombia, a girl that came from, Girls that came from the UK. Kate from Russia. Yeah, Kate from Russia. From Japan. Yeah, like girls are coming from all over. And like last year wasn't even like an X Games qualifier. And people I feel like just wanted to come to be a part of the community. Yeah. It's um, so fun. Even like without competing, it's like yeah. honestly. And and that's the whole yeah. yeah. That's the whole goal is that like you can come for the competitive element, but that's not the only element because I also want to broaden the horizons for like careers and futures for yeah. women in skateboarding. It has to start somewhere. And so that's why we do like the skate, which is scavenger hunt. That's focused on like filming tricks and like going out in the streets and skating different yeah. parks and like getting your crew together, like feeling, feeling out that vibe and doing like a, an event that's like, you know, maybe there's bands or like a raffle or like video yeah. premiere. So it's like people that don't really skate can like kind of mingle and hang with everybody on this like equal playing field where it's like skateboards aren't flying at you. Yeah. Um, so like definitely trying to like diversify like the different experiences we did like a photo show. Yeah. A photo show where like, uh, photographers were featured. Uh, we did a skate jam, junk jam, junk jam with like a yeah. bunch of folks from Unity were a part of that. Um, so like definitely showcasing like different people, having like a vendor booth that's not like all like friggin' energy drinks and like Navy, like <laughs> America's Navy or something. Yeah. Like honestly, like it's all like for us by us. And again, like a lot of people are like, oh, don't you want to make it big and whatever? And I like 
I've definitely thought about it. I'm like, yeah, if somebody wants to cut a check for like 10 grand and I don't have to do anything for it, then heck yeah, I'd put that in the prize purse and that would help me get athletes here and pay them what they deserve. But like, that's not the point of the contest. Yeah. The point is building the community and like, I'm not out here trying to like make money doing it. Like, yeah. I just want to do it. I can know how much it sucks to skate yeah. crappy contests and, and like have missed opportunities for us to become friends and, and stuff like that. So it's like, yeah. I just want to make sure that that can happen. Yeah. It's the best. You should come. <laughs> yeah, Wills of Fortune, May 4th through 6th, 2018 in Seattle, Washington. Yeah. Um, we'll, even help, we'll even help you find a place to stay. Yeah. If you're coming and you don't know anybody, you can fill out an accommodations application and we'll try to get you a place to stay with one of our local hosts. Yeah. Um, there's stuff like the whole weekend. It's, yeah. It's good time. I mean, I've met so many girls that are like, oh, I live in like Timbuktu. Like, what should I do? And I'm like, come to WAF. Well, we have a conversation, but it's also like come to WAF because that's where everyone is. And there's just so many opportunities to create your own community by going there and like getting inspired and then meeting other girls. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, this coming year, uh, we're basically raising money right now for a Sage Williams Memorial Fund. And one of the things that we want to do is we want to fly out um, folks that, like identify as queer or non-binary or gender expansive. So um, we'll definitely be doing like some travel support for, for people to apply so that they can make it to WAF if there's like barriers in terms of like finances. So be looking out for that. Um, awesome. If you, if you need help with access, like we really want to get people there. So nice. Yeah. All right. Um, one more quick question. It's another cliche question. But yeah. Thoughts on the Olympics. Just have to ask um, you. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I think it's an awesome opportunity for, you know, female af athletes to be on the same playing field and to get respect. I mean, you can't, you can't deny that there's like something cool about being able to tell people you're an Olympian. Like if I could have that opportunity, I'd be so stoked. And me and my friend Ian were actually recently talking about how funny it would be if uh, we filmed a documentary on me training for the Olympics, <laughs> even though I like, there's no way I'd Talk ever, gyms. yeah, no, there's no way I'd ever like get invited, but just to see how close I could get, I think it would be kind of funny. Um, so yeah, maybe stay tuned for that. But yeah, I think it's cool. And I'm really psyched for anybody that's in that, that realm and, yeah. you know, and has an opportunity to do that. Um, yeah. And like and real I, talk, it is also providing the opportunity for the pros to make a living because yeah. it's a platform that's large enough where, you know, the reality is that they need to sell product, you're going to spend money in marketing, and like yeah. that's the level where if you're in the Olympics, like you're going to have enough influence Hi, to man. sell product. Um, yeah, I also feel like uh, going along with that, I'm just excited for parents to come to Skate Like Girl and be like, yo we heard blah, 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 Lisa Baker is going to skate yeah. in the Olympics and oh my gosh, like, oh, that's super cool. I want parents to be like, I saw that on TV and I want to get my daughter into that. It's not going to be weird for girls to skateboard anymore. Like I'm so stoked the Olympics like has to have like a men's and women category. Like that's so yeah. sick. Um, and a lot of people worry that like, oh, well, it's like misrepresentative of skateboarding. And like, yes, it's not, it doesn't encapsulate the entire culture. Yeah, there's no way you can encapsulate skateboarding. However, you want to have like a like, smoking weed contest? Like, yeah. what are you talking about? Well, that's also the entry point for a lot of girls because A, they saw it on TV. Maybe they're watching with like X Games Olympics. Yeah, with parents. it's the same people that get mad about Zoomies. It's like, that's an entry point for a lot of people into skateboarding. Exactly. I bought yeah. like my first complete from like some kooky shop that like I would never go into now. Yeah. But that's like Once where my mom in, would take me because it was at the mall. Yeah. Yeah. So like, cool. people need to chill. You need to chill. If you're mad about the Olympics, you need to chill. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it. Real talk. Um, all right. Actually, I have one more really important question. Um, I lied. So okay. thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Um, all right. So so we talk about this a lot as Get Like a Girl, but yeah. um, can you share how privilege, right? So privilege can be a lot of different things. It can yeah. be like able-bodied, like ethnicity, like having – a family that supports you, whatever, um, ethnicity. Um, how has that played a role in being an advocate um, and being able to redefine skate culture because of privilege? Um, and or how has it worked against you? And just can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, yeah, for first, like, first off, I think just like knowing what your privilege is and really recognizing that because I think it's really easy to feel powerless. But then you can think about what other people's identities are and what their experiences are in the world and how because of the way that they look or their identity in, in somewhere where they dress, like they don't have as much privilege. So, mm. or like financial privilege, whatever. So, you know, definitely I'm super lucky to come from like a really solid family that has always like supported me and like helped me go to college and stuff like that. Also had like super high expectations for me growing up and 
like, you know, they weren't necessarily the most supportive of skateboarding, but they've kind of accepted it by now. Um, and obviously like being a white person in this world today, like you just have, um, so much more like ability to navigate a lot of different fields, um, socioeconomically and, and otherwise. Um, I think also like being cisgender and in this world and, in um, being straight, like I think is a huge privilege as well. Um, you know, and I, I hope that in the future that that doesn't mean as much, but as of right now, like I definitely have that privilege in, in a lot of realms. Um, so I feel like within skateboarding, I think a lot of those elements of privilege have helped me create legitimacy for myself and for skate like a girl. So I'd say one big one is that the fact that like I had the privilege to like learn how to skate when I was 12 years old, right? I had access to skateboarding begrudgingly from my parents, but I still had access to it. And there's a skate park in my community. I learned how to skateboard. I'm an athlete. I'm able-bodied. I'm very coordinated. I was able to like learn how to do this. And I translated that um, skill that I had into creating legitimacy for skate like a girl. So I think about would skate like a girl be where it's at if I wasn't good at skateboarding? Like maybe not, but maybe we'd be good at other stuff, but we wouldn't have the same legitimacy. So um, I think that definitely like works to, to my advantage in terms of like shifting culture. Yep. And in ways that it's kind of worked against me, like, I don't know. Um, I guess in a lot of ways, like being female, like trying to, you know, ruffle the feathers in the male dominant industry, like, uh, I think there's a lot, a lot of problems there. Like, I think there's a lot of problematic men that still have positions of power in skateboarding, uh, whether it be because they're abusers or they're just not good role models or they just don't have effective, like, I don't know, like dialogue. They just yeah. don't care about yeah. girls skateboarding, you know, whatever they're sexist, whatever it is. And that's always been really difficult. Like, I just think that, um, existing institutionalized male dominated culture is, is still there. Sure. Like we're chipping away at it, yeah. but it's still there. And um, talk a little bit about allyship and how that's like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So going along with that, like I can definitely sit here all day and like complain that there's so many problematic men, but that would only be like such a small sliver of yeah. the pot, like the whole picture. Right. Mm -hmm. So like there's so many rad allies out there, like so many men. And I don't know. I had an experience where I was at a skate like a girl ladies night and the randomly this dude that smelled like alcohol just like showed up and just started ripping. It's like all girls. There's like kind of some lessons going on, whatever. I'm just standing there and I just watched this guy just waltz in and just start skating. And I looked over at some guys that worked in the park. I'm like, you're just not going to say anything. And they're like, Oh, well it's your night. And I'm like, yeah, but like you work here. And like, I was just in that moment. I was like, from my perspective, I was like, I'm not going to go talk to this dude that smells like beer. That's like ripping around the park. that he has to get out. Like, that is where like allies are important, right? So like, there's definitely like places where like for me as like a straight cis person, I need to like call out my friends when they're not using the right gender pronouns for somebody that I know like is trans or whatever. Um, like in the same way that like a guy needs to like call out other problematic bros that are, you know, not staying in their lane basically. Yeah. And that's why allyship is super important because the voice of certain people is going to resonate with certain people that look like them. Yep. So if there's common ground there, they're going to understand and understanding like how the hierarchy of like that privilege works. Mm -hmm. So like, I definitely think like I can sit here all day and complain about guys, but I don't think that's, that's not the answer. The yeah. answer is like everyone embodying the idea of being an ally and figuring yep. out what communities they can really be allies to. Um, the last intro that I wrote for skate, Witches was definitely talking about that. And definitely like as like female skaters that are like reading this, you know, um this piece that i wrote like the whole idea is just like you know support your friends and and support all identities and figure out like what are ways that you can you can improve and a lot of times we just sit here and complain oh no i just said girls couldn't skateboard and whatever and like i laugh at that all day like you know but at the same time it's like there's definitely ways that i can be better and like yeah. what are those ways i need to talk about those and have those critical conversations that like, get uncomfortable yeah because like nobody likes to be called out because like we're all trying our best out here yeah. but it's like that's not the point it's like you got to be about self-improvement yeah. If you really want to see like a socially justice world or a social socially justice just world, and especially that reflected in your local skate scene, you gotta get to be you gotta be a part of that. Yeah. You gotta be a pillar of that. Yeah, you gotta be committed to it. I would say that part of all the success or progress or whatever you want to call whatever you want to call it in the past, you know, five plus years has come from okay, how can we move this conversation forward as opposed to just like agreeing with each other, like yeah, you know, yeah, it's like totally. tunnel vision or like echo chamber where. It's like, what can we create not only in a conversation, but also like literally like zines, clothes, like boards, contests, like to move it all forward. That's where like, we'll start to actually get away from like, we won't have to complain anymore because we're just seeing the things that are awesome. And like, we're creating that and like have influence and leadership and like, 
longevity in that. So definitely. I'm seeing a shout out from my friend Sylvia saying broalition, which is a word that we came up with. <laughs> yes. It's like a coalition of bros that like have your back. So right now in Seattle, like uh, the Skate Girl office uh, is getting redeveloped. And when I say that, I mean like it's getting removed and knocked down and not rebuilt. Um, and that's because the city sold the skate park and the office um, to the Oakview group that are going to redevelop the key arena. So they're knocking our space down and the skate park down to uh, build a parking lot essentially for a new ice hockey and basketball arena, which I don't care about, but um, it's very upsetting for us. And so right now we're working with a broalition that's going to help us talk to the city of Seattle and, and hopefully get them to the city council yeah. at least to like really realize like, Oh crap, we can't just, take out this free public space for people to come skateboard and we can't knock down this building that nonprofits operate out of yep. and not really rebuild them. So yeah, yeah you got to use your bro because my voice doesn't matter at the city level, but my bros that have like a PhD after their title on their email that are white, older dudes with families, like they have a voice that I don't. So yeah. shout out to my bros. And my bro yeah. And I think ultimately it is about creating teamwork, not just with people that, might be exactly like you but who have you know the understanding of the same mission and that's really important is to have diversity to like work together as a team as opposed to just be like oh like you're all chicks work together it's like well what if are we have different missions right yeah so, but there might be guys that are like mission aligned it's like, yeah that's super important don't necessarily so, close that door yeah exactly yeah so awesome everybody can be an ally everybody should be an ally yeah Sweet. All right. So do you guys have any other questions? I think we're going to just spend a few more minutes. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> PMA. So someone, uh, Alex White asked, what does PMA mean to you? Uh, well, for those of you that don't know, don't know, it stands for positive mental attitude and there's a bad brain song about PMA. Um, and I guess sometimes when I'm like going for a trick, I sometimes let all like thought will cross my mind. Like I'm just going to have a positive attitude about it. I mean, it sounds like super corny, but like, if you have PMA, like nobody can mess with you. Like nothing can get you down. Like, um, so yeah, I guess for me, it's just like, just the power of positivity. Like I follow a bunch of like positivity accounts on Instagram. Like I'm total nerd about that, but he wants to know, like, I'm always like, I have a friend that we like DM positive quotes to each other. And like in my work chat, uh, with like my two coworkers at scale, like a girl, Matt and Hannah, shout out to you guys. Uh, we are like group chats called like positive affirmations and we just send like positive things to each other. So yeah. Yeah, I'm not like a hippie. A it's like, yeah, no, it just makes but, a difference because like humans naturally like we're so much to, negativity. Well, that and we're trying to like we're designed to like survive and fix things. Like like if back in the day like a dinosaur is coming at you, you're just like run, you know. So it's like yeah, we're literally programmed in order to just survive. But that also can turn into especially like modern day when we don't we're not worried about dinosaurs attacking us. Like that turns into other like negative thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I was going to have to say speak for yourself. <laughs> um, but yeah, we turned into negative thoughts about things that like aren't actually like life threatening. Yeah. And then like that works against us. So totally. yeah, I think, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. There was a quote earlier. Like I was asked what quote resonated with me, with me and I said, talk to yourself. Like you talk to your best good friend, yeah. you know, like I'm always like, if someone's like struggling, I'm like, no way, like you deserve better. Like, fuck that guy. like, you know, like I'm all like hype man. I'm like, you got this. Yeah. But then like when For I'm trying to trick like, or whatever, suck. I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm terrible. Yeah. You know, but sometimes another thing when I get negative thoughts is I say them out loud and then it sounds it crazy. Sounds and my husband yeah. is like, you're, you're insane. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Wait, what is this? Who you got to win the WS? What's that? World Series. Whitecaps? Dude, I don't watch. I'm boycotting the NFL. Shout out to Sean King. I'm boycotting the NFL. Colin Kaepernick is, Kaepernick is the man. And I'm not watching that. And I also don't really know anything about baseball. Um, I don't know. I hope the Yankees don't win. All right. Any questions from our <laughs> amazing in-studio crew? <laughs> Who's going to, with the MLS Cup 2K17, go Whitecaps? Who sounds? That's a lot of sports questions. Yeah. It's actually your husband. I'm not I'm Sporty Spice. Sports. <laughs> sports. I'm not sporty. Are, you, are you Scary Spice? Uh, no, yeah. I was definitely Sporty Spice growing up. Yeah. Yep. That was the Spice Girl that I aligned with. Sporty yeah. Spice nice. Girl fan? Yeah. yeah. Favorite karaoke song? Um, At the moment. I the always, my go-to is usually Shoop. Yeah. It's a real, real crowd pleaser. <laughs> um, but I also like Huey Lewis in the News. Um, sometimes I do this Dolly Parton song called 9 to 5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She like does her acrylic nails at the beginning. It's pretty sad. It sounds like a wash word. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Any last thoughts? 
Um, I don't know. Or final shout. Any shout outs? <laughs> Anyone uh, shout out? Everyone in this room, Ashley, Norma, Shari, Angie, Alex, Kermit, Kim. Um, Piggy. Shout out to you. <laughs> oh, Kevin. favorite part in oh, Seriously? Oh, God. <laughs> well, that's a good one. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't even like men's skateboarding. Seriously, I, bar I barely watch it. I only watch, like, old dudes that skateboard. Like, Andrew Reynolds. I'll watch Andrew Reynolds skate or, like, the dudes that ride for, like, I don't know, Friendship or something like that. Um, and also, like, my friends that I know. But I don't really, like, care what dudes are doing that I, like, just absolutely cannot relate to. Um, if you're flipping in and flipping out, I just am not watching it. <laughs> uh, such a solid quote. Favorite part, and seriously, uh, probably Shari's because she's got a gangster ass song and she's like, um, also, Angie's part is so sick. <laughs> Sylvia <laughs> asks, why isn't Street League women's uh, full contest online? Dude, I don't know. The world will never know. Like, my mom was in Portugal and somehow found it and watched it. Angie and I have been losing sleep over here trying to freaking. Oh, my mom's calling. Aww, That'd be pretty funny you. if we face her. But you should. No. No, I'm in Disney. Yeah. Um, there's another question. Yeah, why that? That? yeah, if you're watching this and you're from Street League, please put it on the internet. Please. <laughs> That's so I think Devin Briggs does win the weirdest questions. Devin Briggs, you won. What's the prize? Uh, I can't remember. What did A I date, tell Date with Kermit? Was it? <laughs> Uh, I put something on my Instagram story that it was a prize. Or maybe I just said you win a prize. I'll give you a Skate Witcher shirt, Devin. Or I'll let you dye my hair because it's looking bad. What color should you do? I'm it's trying nice. to be... Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I need to have my hair blonde for uh, Halloween because I'm trying to be Lance Bass. <laughs> I think if it. I got a turtleneck... Let's see it. Uh, yeah. So I think I could, like, part it or something, and it would be kind of funny. Like, this is not working out so good right now, but I could maybe part it. <laughs> you know, like get some gel like this. Oh yeah. And then get a turtleneck. Yeah. You think. yeah, yeah. But yeah. then you need the whole crew. So like yeah. And like yeah, well I'm working on that. I think Shari Wait, who's Shari, you should be uh JT. Ooh, Shari could be JT. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Angie's gonna be Chris Kirkpatrick. No, Norma. Chris Kirkpatrick. Because he had braces. Overalls. Once. <laughs> and overalls. Perfect. Oh my, oh my god. god. Uh do you wanna be one of the dudes with the goat maybe? No, Oh, we're gonna be in sync, right? Yeah. Okay. Alex should be Kevin. True. Ooh. The, the Side note: the facial hair. It's really funny. There's a lot of guys that sort of look like Alex. Yeah. <laughs> That's person. That's person. I think you're JT. Right? Because you're gonna do like, Oh yeah. I'm JT. Oh yep. Angie, who are you gonna be? I'm Chris Kirkpatrick. Oh wait. All right, no, so, I think Norma should be Chris Kirkpatrick. Okay, Norma's sorry. Kirkpatrick. We're running this. We're ruining this. <laughs> Sorry, not right. like Just, I think we should keep this on the DL so that it'll be surprised. Yeah, true. So we we might even be back to Wars 98 Degrees. Out, yeah. We're going to have to wait to find out. Or One Direction, maybe? I mean, that's One. a little bit more modern. I don't even know the guys that are going to Street League head honcho here. Don't ask questions. Small fry. We post a video online once we get Red Bull and Monster and Rockstar to commiserate. Conglomerate. Conglomerate and give us 55 billion so we can buy jets. All right, guys. So we're going to take the whole Halloween in sync conversation um, offline, and you'll just have to look at Instagram and see what happens. <laughs> TBD. But um, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you, Kristen, for being on the show. Thank you, Kim, for having me on the show. You're super welcome. Shout out to Kermit for being super patient this whole time. Oh, picture. Why does he have a mystery moment? I don't know. But also, you said that. Yeah. Do you get it? Okay. Got it. Um, episode three is coming soon. Who's on episode two? three? Zora is going to be nice. episode three. Ooh. And then episode four is going to be Eileen. So Sweet. what did, um, wait, weren't you going to say something though about last episode? Oh, the last episode, the thing that you said that you wanted to comment on. Oh yeah. Know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So totally, um, on that level of just understanding when there's different languages being created and different kind of, for me, even just getting when like I'm doing something that I didn't even realize like was um, affecting, you know, the culture and like the influence that we have. Um, but shout out to, I don't remember the Instagram name, but um, someone DMs me the last, uh, the first episode I did a little teaser and I posted on Instagram and Facebook and I was talking about Namchi who is a very good friend of mine. And I was like, uh, talking about how she's a software engineer and um and i said she's definitely way smarter than me 
Um, and then I um, actually got this rad comment and um, from one of our viewers who was like, oh, you know, like actually that language is a little bit, um, you know, uh, detrimental to like young girls. And I was like, wait, what? And I thought about it and I was like, okay, I get it. And he explained it to me, but essentially, um, you know, by me saying that she was smarter than me because she was an engineer, um, sort of continues to play out this, you know, stereotype that um, because the STEM, uh, the STEM industry is predominantly male, that like women are not as smart as men because we aren't, you know, in STEM. So just kind of putting that thing out of like, oh, she's way smarter than me because she's a software engineer. Um, was it, for me, it was like a good moment to understand like, okay, yeah, actually like she's not smarter than me. We're skilled in different areas. Um, and yeah, if a young girl's like listening or watching, like that's kind of feeding into that stereotype of like um, where she's already getting that and people are telling her that and that's just creating that culture more when really, yeah, there is no difference when it comes like a little girl can be a software engineer, a little boy can be a software engineer. Like there is no reason that like she can't do it because she's not smart enough. So anyways, um, I think any, any comp, I think women tend to do this as, and like we're just socialized this way, I think. And it's just to downplay any compliments. Oh, we like downplay any compliments that we get, uh, yeah. or like kind of tell other people that they're like way better than us. We yeah. can never be that good. And yeah. it's like, it's like awkward, like lack of confidence. Like, can't we just be like, yeah, and she's hell smart and, and I am too. too. Yeah. yeah. But like smart. that even feels weird to say out loud. Yeah. And like, why is that? So let's yeah. change that. Everybody. I'm in this room smart. and on the internet. So <laughs> yeah. So is Namchi. Wow, Kim, you're so smart, so smart. But you know who else is smart? <laughs> me. Shout out to me. And also me. <laughs> and and Lopito Lop 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 MC. And on that note, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, feel free to share this if you liked what you saw and you want to get you know what we talked about out there. Um, and stay tuned for the next episode. Happy no. Halloween. Kermit says goodnight. <laughs> Bye guys. Sorry I burped so much. I drank a fizzy water.